On the 31st of December 2020, Flash support ended across all major web browsers. Uh, apart from Safari, they ended it all the way back in September. I mean, come on Apple, I know you didn't like Flash, but Jesus, have some decorum. So with the plugin being out of commission and classic Flash games no longer loading on the website, surely the Neopets experience is done for, right? I'm sure you're expecting me to say no right now and reveal some grand scheme I've put in place to keep this series going, but the truth is, yes, it is done for. But considering the sheer amount of unused raw footage I currently have on my computer, and the fact that I still have an Altador Cup saga to wrap up here, the show, at least for now, must go on. Hey guys, Tamago here, and welcome back to the Neopets experience. Now in the last episode, I chose to back Mystery Island for the 2020 Altador Cup, and we played our first match of Yu Yu Ball against the Darrigan Citadel. It was quite an intense showdown, but Mystery Island managed to narrowly come out on top and claim their first win of the cup. But it wouldn't stop there. Yu Yu Ball matches take place every day during the month long tournament period, and each match presents a new chance to either climb up or plummet down the rankings. A couple of matches later, and Mystery Island had found its way to fourth place, having just beaten Crook Island in Yu Yu Ball, but uh, apparently not doing so well in the other Altador Cup games. These mini games are also an important contributing factor to your team's overall standing. You submit scores from each of them daily, and whichever of the two opposing teams has a higher score total at the end of the day wins. Evidently, Mystery Island has been slacking on this front, so allow me to introduce you to each of the three mini games, starting with Slushy Slinger. In this game, you play as a Tuscanini serving slushies to Altador Cup spectators. There are three kinds of slushies the customers can request, and it's your job to give them the correct drinks as well as collect their empty cups when they're done. Failure to fulfill a customer's order or pick up an empty cup in time will cost you a life, and once you lose all five, it's game over. This one is pretty fun and gets quite challenging the longer you go. I also thought it was a nice touch how the game's colour scheme changes to match that of your chosen Altador Cup team. I thought it could have done with some high tempo background music to accompany the fast paced gameplay since it did feel quite empty at times, although this becomes less of an issue when the pressure starts to ramp up. If you want a fun alternative way to contribute to your team's overall standing, Slushy Slinger is a good choice. I'm giving it a 7 out of 10. The second mini game is called Make Some Noise. In this one, you control a very eager Teko by tapping two randomly assigned keys as quickly as possible, as well as the occasional bonus key. The longer you keep the sound meter maxed out, the higher your score will be. You also get more points for tapping the keys in a consistent rhythm rather than sporadically. So basically this game is designed to give you carpal tunnel. Not joking, it genuinely hurts to play this for too long, at least if you're trying to do it with one hand. It's not an awful game, but there's really not much to it. They did a good job at making that techo look hype as hell though. I'm giving Make Some Noise a 4 out of 10. Now if you'll excuse me, I need to see a physiotherapist. The third and final Altador Cup minigame is Shootout Showdown. In this one, you're given one minute to try and score five goals against the keeper. You choose the position of the ball, hold down space to adjust the power, and then release to shoot. This game is incredibly easy. I really don't know why they chose to limit it to just five goals, rather than letting you see how many goals you can score within the 60 second period. In fact, you really don't even have to adjust either the position or power. I won the game in 13 seconds just by tapping the space bar. Bro, just stand still. You would have saved all of them. Although I feel this game had a lot of potential, it ended up being my least favorite, even less so than the one which physically injured me. So I'm giving Shootout Showdown a 3 out of 10. Overall, aside from Slushy Slinger, the mini games aren't particularly fun, so I can understand why Mystery Island might be letting things falter here. Our standards are simply too high for our own good. I received a message saying that someone had gifted me a yellow paintbrush. I'm guessing whoever sent this wanted Bright Legs back to his original colour, and while I appreciate it, I can't lie, his new look has grown on me. But I figured it was time to give him a new outfit, as he hasn't had a proper one since my account got hacked. So I fitted him with this dashing green blazer, these hot pink trousers which Neopets calls basic, but honestly, I find nothing basic about them. Only thing left was to get some fresh blue shoes on him, and Bright Legs was looking like well, he was looking like a pimp, I can't lie. Over the next few days, I continued playing Yu Yu Ball matches and absolutely wrecked 
all the competition. I'm talking 6-1 versus the Lost Desert, 7-2 versus Terrania. Bro, even the practice team, which is the team you play against when you don't have a matchup for the day, got this work. And when I faced up against my old team, Rue Island, it was a wrap. 7-0? <laughs> you wish I was still on your team. This is why you haven't won in 12 years. Embarrassing. I beat Meridel 8-1. Embarrassing. I beat Brightvale 5 to 1. Embarrassing. I beat Fairyland 9 to. <laughs> Forget about it. And it would have been a clean sweep too if it wasn't for that damn mutant UU. I told you it's an asshole. One second left. Are you kidding me? But despite my best efforts, Mystery Island only continued to drop further and further down the league table, eventually landing in 10th place. What is going on? Am I the only one on Mystery Island putting in this work? The first round of the tournament would be over in just a few days, and things weren't looking good, so it was a pleasant surprise when I discovered it would soon be Nemo Day, which I saw as the perfect distraction from my Altador Cup woes. Every Every species in Neopets has a day dedicated to celebrating them, and the 15th of June just so happened to be Nemo Day. I couldn't let such an occasion go by without celebrating, so I decided to get Brightlegs a little something as a gift. I did some Google searching and came across this Nemo Day cupcake, fruitcake, and sandwich. I also checked the Neopets Twitter account to see if they had posted anything for the special occasion, but there was no such tweet to be found. In fact, the last tweet they posted was them celebrating Quiggle Day. So <laughs> no favoritism there! I searched on the shop wizard and was able to find the Nemo Day cupcake and sandwich no problem. The fruitcake however proved to be harder to find for a reasonable price. The first time I searched, there were no results for it at all. I tried again and there was only one listing for 96,000 Neo points. I then found one for 63,000 which was an improvement but I could sense better deals on the horizon. Basically I was just refreshing the page until I found the lowest price. Easiest bargain hunt I ever did. It seemed that 37,949 was the lowest it was gonna get though, so I bought that one. Suffice to say, Brightlegs had a very pleasant Nemo day and was dressed apart too. This had rejuvenated my spirits, and to make things even better, I was pleasantly surprised to discover Mystery Island had moved up one ranking to 9th place after a clean sweep victory against Moltara. With 7 wins to our name, we were quite far behind the table lead but there was still an opportunity to climb up. The Altador Cup is split into two rounds. The first is where each team competes against every other team to determine the bracket they qualify for in the finals round. And in the finals, the 18 teams are divided into three brackets depending on their league table placement, and each team will then play against every other team in their own bracket. This means that for Mystery Island to have any hope of coming in first place, or even just in the top five, we would have to make sure we were in at least 6th place by the time round 1 was over. And with only 4 games left in the round, while not impossible, it would certainly be a challenge. We'd also have to hope that a few of these teams just ahead of us didn't do so well over the next few days. But the good news is that one of them was Virtue Pets, the very next team Mystery Island would be facing. But before we get into how that and the rest of the round 1 matches went, let's check out some more games, starting with Jungle Raider. In this game, you play as a Minchie adventurer who has found a rare treasure in the jungles of... Well, Mystery Island, and must now escape by swinging from vine to vine and avoiding enemies along the way. The vines swing automatically, so you need to time your jumps carefully in order to properly navigate from one vine to the next. Falling off of vines costs you lives, and when you run out, it's game over. That's not the only way to lose though, if your health meter reaches zero, it's also game over, regardless of how many lives you have left. It might not seem like it at first, but the game provided a decent challenge. There are three levels to complete in order to beat the game, and I found myself struggling to actually finish level 3, with my highest score being 978. I won't take all the blame though, the game is a little unresponsive at times, and the controls feel somewhat clunky too. You can also collect the balloons along the way to gain extra points, although with this game having a fixed number of levels, there does seem to be a maximum possible score of 1534. Maybe I'll try and go for it sometime, but not today. And now that Flash is gone, probably not ever again. Jungle Raider gets a 6 out of 10. Next up was Kiko Match 2. 
This was a simple memory game where for each pair of cards that you correctly match, you reveal more of a Kiko themed picture underneath. Each round has a time limit and if you fail to clear all the cards before the time's up, it's game over. I managed to get to round 9, which involved matching 36 cards in 105 seconds. Trust me, it's more difficult than it sounds. Unfortunately, I didn't beat this round, but I did notice they had started reusing the pictures from earlier rounds, so it appeared there were no further the rewards for my efforts anyway. I'm giving Kiko Match 2 a 6 out of 10. After that was Tubular Kiko Racing. In this game, you powder your way down a lake while avoiding obstacles and attacks from enemies on the lake shore who are shooting the slowest moving arrows known to man. There are items in the lake which give you bonus points as well as bullets which you can fire at enemy Kikos. This game has great presentation. I really liked the character art, environments and animations and even thought the background music was pretty good too. And once I got the hang of the gameplay, I was able to make my way down the lake pretty smoothly, which kind of contributes to what I think is the biggest shame of this game, and that's that once you reach the bottom of the lake, the game's finished. You can literally beat it in two minutes. I suppose there's the replay incentive of trying to get a higher score by picking up more items, but I really would have liked for this game to have been longer. For that reason, I was tempted to give it a 6, but I can't deny how much I like this game's style. So I'm giving Tubular Kiko Racing a 7 out of 10. I then tried the Wheel of Knowledge, which as a game of pure chance was obviously disqualified, but I gave it a go anyway. I ended up winning a book called The Little Scorchio, which Brightlegs proclaimed was one of his favourites, so I guess that's a win. Next up was Kiss the Mortog, which turned out to not really be a game either, but instead more of a creepy kissing booth type thing where you pay 50 Neo points and choose one of two Mortogs to kiss, and if you correctly choose the one that is secretly a prince or princess, you can win more Neo points. I chose the one on the left, and unfortunately for me, and I guess more unfortunately for it, I made the wrong decision. Not one to leave after just one loss though, I tried again. Sadly at the expense of yet another Mortog. And another. And another. I really should have stopped, or at least tried going for the one on the right for a change, but you know what they say, if at first you fail, try, try again. Especially if it's not your life on the line. Eventually, I made the right choice and revealed an Aisha princess. I was then given the opportunity to either take my earnings and go, or continue playing and risk even more Mortog lives. But I figured 5 dead Mortogs was more than enough for my conscience, and I wasn't too fond of the kissing either, so I decided to call it quits. Rest in peace to Morty, Mortimer, Moriarty, Morticia, and Maureen. I am very sorry. If it's any consolation, this game is disqualified, so hopefully no future Mortogs will have to meet a similar fate. And now it's time to check back in with Mystery Island's Altador Cup progress. The first of round 1's final 4 matches would be against Virtue Pets, and this game even had bonus points, so performance in this match was crucial. Thankfully, the team was on its A game as usual, with us scoring the first goal of the match within the opening 3 seconds. Virtue Pets was doing a pretty good job defensively but ultimately it was no match for us and specifically for our star striker Taylor Nix, who scored 4 out of the 6 goals in the game, including a very impressive one with the Darrigan UU, which he shot with his back completely turned to the net. Volgoff then scored a goal, increasing our lead to 5-0, and Vela Binol, with the aid of a net widening power up, scored the final goal to round things off for the match. Although that 6-0 victory was convincing enough on my end, Mystery Island's standing would be determined by how well other Neopets players did too, so I was delighted the next day to find that we had actually moved up a ranking to 8th place, after beating Virtupets in every competition aside from Shootout Showdown, and come on, who likes that game anyway? Our next match was against Terra Mountain, and once again Mystery Island showed what they're made of with yet another 6-0 victory. It was especially fitting considering we were now in joint 6th place with Virtue Pets, Lost Desert, and Crook Island, 
all with nine wins each. This means that while we were in a good position to qualify for the top bracket, we couldn't rest on our laurels. We would need to win our remaining two games and hope the other teams weren't so fortunate. The next match was against Altador, which is the team representing the very region that the tournament is named after and takes place in. Rather ironically though, Team Altador has yet to actually win a cup, and after playing against them, I could see why. 7-1 in your own tournament, in your own city, in your own stadium. Embarrassing. We managed to beat them in every single competition, giving us the extra win we needed to establish a lead and secure that sixth place position exclusively for ourselves. Now all we would need to do is win this next game against Miraqua in order to guarantee our spot in the top division. This was it. The final game of round one, and Mystery Island's last chance to prove themselves worthy of the top bracket. Elon Hewless gets first possession of the ball and immediately throws it away. Salmon Wolf takes a shot, but it is caught by Tony Plessix and yeeted out of there. Luckily, Vila Binal intercepts and makes a pass to Volgoth, who goes on to score the first goal of the match. Things are looking good so far, but next up is a Darrigan UU, which can only mean trouble. Taylor Nix took multiple attempts at the goal, but with the ball going wherever it wanted, hitting shots on target was near impossible. Eventually, a goal widening power up appeared, as though the Altador gods themselves could sense Mystery Island's trouble and gave them a hand. This game would have definitely been a lot more competitive if the other teams could take advantage of the power ups too, but hey, I'm not complaining. With a minute and 43 seconds left, Taylor Nix grabs the ball, but it is stolen from him by Elon Hewless, not once, but twice in a row. Elon's shooting ability evidently isn't as sharp though, and so despite a non-stop barrage of steals that would bring a tear even to Tandruk Shea's eye, Maraqua just couldn't pull off a goal, and eventually Selman Wolf had to show them how it's done. It was now a 3-0 lead to Mystery Island, with 40 seconds left. Things were looking pretty comfortable, but the next ball was the Mutant UU, known for being the least predictable of them all. Although surprisingly, this time around, Volgoth showed IT who's calling the shots around here. 24 seconds remaining, Taylor Nix grabs the ball, and it is stolen AGAIN by Elon Hewless, who's left with a wide open net for a goal. No cause for concern though, as with 12 seconds left, Mystery Island had surely won, although Volgoth just couldn't resist rubbing salt in the wound. It's a 5-1 victory against Miraqua, following another stellar performance from Team Mystery Island to complete round one. But considering we also rely on the performance of other players, would this be enough to qualify us for the top bracket in the finals and give us a shot at winning the Altador Cup? What will Neopets do now that Flash player support is gone? And most importantly, what then will be the fate of the Neopets experience? Find out next time on The Neopets Experience!